Are you ready to get woke? Yeah, the, I, the only thing I wanted to get into was that because people are already in the fear vibration, it's so easy to go. Actually, I did say this. I did say this. Once you're already afraid, boom, put the mask on. And if you're in the love vibration, you're like, fuck off with your fear propaganda. We're, you would just automatically look at it and go, this is bullshit. So it really just comes down to your vibration. And so that's what this is. They've, they've, they use so much money and propaganda and, you know, a really long time to lower everybody into the fear and the survival using the economy, using the everything, all of it. It's all about that making us unhealthy. So, so the, the counter to that is love. It's the only thing we can do, burst into those higher frequencies and from a place of love, then we, that love is the greatest healer too. We're looking at you know, all the new stuff at the time. So if we can get to that love, that breaks all of it, all of it. And so that's why the spiritual global awakening would end this and end all this nonsense. If, we're all, if we get to the love, that's what happens here. It's over. Like if, if, if everybody just on the scale of consciousness suddenly just gets to 500, you know, 501, forget about it. Forget it, it's over. It's just over. So even if the the creator was like, okay, I'm going to give you guys a bump up, just to 501. But everybody, everybody gets to 501, and if you're already more, that's fine. But everybody gets bumped up. Wow, that would be dope. That would just be the dope. <laughs> that would just be over. It would just yeah. be over. Wow. That yeah, that's so exciting, isn't it? And we're not talking about love from the place of you know, romantic love, we're talking about the substance of this universe is made from love. Love is the greatest and most powerful thing that we are, you know. So when we come and are connected to that place inside of us as our divine heritage, as our divine, uh, as divine sovereign beings, we are unstoppable from that, that place of love. So all they can really do, or we say they, they're really us, but they are holding on and they're resisting what's happening, even though they've been a part of the plan, you know, it's all perfect in the end, but they're hanging on for dear life. That's for sure. And they don't want to let go anytime soon. And, you know, there's a black book my dad had uh, back in the fifties and it was on the black market and it was, it had pictures of, uh, things that were going on with the Royals during the war. And, uh, it had all kinds of interesting information there. And at one time Hitler was a hero and the uh, journalists thought he was an amazing guy who, you know, got Germany going again and all the rest of it. And then he lost his gourd. But, um, before, before that happened, they were interviewing him, this journalist, and it was in this bla uh, black book. And the journalist went, man, you know, to Himmler, who was the propaganda for Hitler, right? He goes, uh, you're, you must be the great, greatest propagandist in the world, you know? And apparently he laughed and went, oh God, I couldn't hold a candle to the Catholic Church. And and then and then uh, they said to him, uh, how do you get to the Ger German people to do the, what you've got them to do? And he said, oh, it's easy. Just tell them the Russians are coming. They'll do anything. Or just tell them COVID's coming. <laughs> As long as there's a bad guy. As long as there's something to fear, right? And, you know, the thing, right, about fear is the only thing, and we hear it all the time, we have to fear is fear itself, you know? Um, because actually it is there and can be used as an amazing catalyst for, for growth. If we stop running from it and just face it and just a real quick story here i used to have nightmares remember for years and years and years and i mean bad i ground my teeth my my parents were threatening to lock me in my bedroom because i would do crazy shit when i was sleeping i got to the point where i was afraid to go to sleep because my nightmares were so bad and uh when i started to sober up and i got more connected to, you know to my heart to my divine connection uh, and supportive community, what happened for me was it just started slowly, slowly sinking in and sinking in and sinking in. And then one night, same nightmare, I'm being chased. Things are coming at me, demons, Nazis, this whole thing, right? And I'm always running and afraid. Or if I do stop and fight, I feel hopeless. I can't ever beat it, right? And so I'm running along, same old dream I've been having for years and years and years. 
and a voice came again in my dream. First time I ever heard a voice in my dream. And it said, have you ever stopped and looked, really looked at what you're running from? And I went, oh my God, I, I haven't. And it stopped. And I like felt like a tree planted in my dream, like anchored in a reality that I'd never experienced before because it was always just pure fear. And then I slowly turned around and all of my fears were coming towards me. And you know what was so beautiful about that experience too? All these angelic beings ended up holding my hand and they were all there and I realized, oh my God, they've been there all along. But because I was in so much fear, I was just interested in running and nothing else. They were always there helping. I just wasn't aware of them until I stopped running and just stood in and faced what I was running from. And then they all, and I felt by the way from these beings, like love surging through me, like so much power. And it started to get very luminous and all of these figures disappeared and there was just peace left. And you know the beauty of that? Never had a nightmare again after that. Yeah. And Ooh, so yeah. face your fear. You can F everything and run. Or you can face everything and recover. Realize it's false evidence appearing real. Right? And now you can face everything and rejoice. You can feel everything and recover. Because you just forgot everything's all right. That's my the fear thing and that's really how it works everything is actually all right but you won't know that till you stop running trust that you're supported and really take a look at your fears in your life in all your relationships in your life anywhere if that's driving you it's really challenging to feel the love to connect to the love to connect to others so it's a necessary part of the shaman's path we have to face the fear of our own death and realize we're eternal <coughs> beings and you know the funny thing they say die before you die in other words die now so you can really live now and you can really be here now right so that's that whole thing around that and it's funny from the near death experience bunch which I've had myself whoever they interview they all say the same thing all of them I didn't want to come back <laughs> nobody wanted to come nobody back wants to come back there's so many there's so many stories out there from on, oh my god meditators uh, near death experiences spiritual experiences all this kind of stuff man it is so good when you actually experience our our true nature without the body, just just the consciousness. Wow! And you know your home. It yeah. is such just, absolute yeah. bliss and joy, and it's yeah. forever. Ever. There's no time. Right? That's when I came back. I was like, "Oh, there's <laughs> no time. It doesn't exist. This yeah. is just an experience for yeah. infinite eternal consciousness." Yeah. So that's really the big secret, and that's what this yeah. war, war on consciousness, this vibrational war, is really, really all about: keeping the biggest secret secret. You are yeah. eternal, and if you yeah. knew you were eternal, you wouldn't be afraid of anything. If you've experienced ego death, death, right. but it's not death. Right. Ego death. And gone just for three, literally a moment even. I say three seconds. Three seconds is too long because it's an eternity when you're there. Yeah. So if you just had that experience, you'd go, oh, okay, there's no need to be afraid of anything because that's what you truly are. This is just an expression of that infinite consciousness. So if people, that's why this, and that's why so many people, you, me, many, many others, we keep getting the message, even though we want to run around and wake everybody up and, oh my God. The message is always just raise the consciousness, just raise the vibration, mm -hmm. that people know that that is the mm -hmm. truth. Those higher vibrational feelings of oneness and love, mm -hmm. that is the truth. Oneness, you know, you hear the spiritual people go, eh, yeah, we're all one. It's not a spiritual thing to say to be cool. It is literally reality. The metaphysical mm -hmm. reality is there is only one infinite consciousness that is eternal, and we're it. And we'll always yeah. be it. We've always been it. There's nothing yeah. else we can be but that 
ever. And like you say that. Be afraid. Play, that right. Be afraid. Right. Be afraid. <laughs> eternal consciousness. <laughs> like afraid of what? There's nothing but me here. There's nothing but that one here. What could you be afraid of? And it's then insane. we get back to quality of life style experience, a like quality of life experience, right? Fearless loving, fearless living comes when we go beyond the fear of death because we know who we are and interesting every person too was told to come back because they hadn't finished what they came here to do so don't get worried about being enlightened you know which actually just means let go of what isn't you that's all so you can just be you you're already that you don't have to earn it or achieve it you're already that so it's more about let go of everything that isn't that, right? To just be what you already are. And so with that one, we all have a mission here. We don't have to get all caught up in, did we not get it here? You know, because in that other consciousness, we are enlightened. You know, here we're awakening and remembering who we are here right as a eternal beings which gives us another whole experience of what it means to live and be alive and love here and we all came here for something we all have our unique purpose our mission here right in our own unique way but it's under the umbrella of the same one thing the planet's awakening and everybody has a part to play so then it becomes about well be here now, fearless loving, fearless living, living my gifts, my talents, right, in service to the collective awakening in a way that brings me incredible joy. And I'm able to connect differently with everything and everyone around me and be that beacon or that lighthouse for love here, love and light. And, and that's it. That's, that's what it becomes. And like Sasha said, when we're quiet, in the center of the storm, we can listen and hear our own internal guidance from source, from spirit. And don't you worry, the right people will show up, the right things at the right time in the right places, and you'll be shown what you need to do, right? And it isn't just about putting our head in the sand and doing nothing. It's, you know, we're got, we've got a lot of detoxing to do, a lot of things that are going to come up, a lot of things to face that will, you know, be our own personal journey. And here's the good news too. You cannot evolve in a vacuum in the sense that it isn't a vacuum. As we evolve, we affect everything and everyone around us. We don't grow and awaken so that we can awaken our family, although we'd love them and love them to. We do it because we're here and that's what we're here to do. But in our awakening, everyone's affected. Your family's consciousness goes up. The global consciousness goes up. Like Sasha said, the best thing we can do is to raise our own consciousness is the best and greatest gift that we can give not only ourselves, our family, our community, but the whole planet. That's right, and that, that really sums up that question to all the people, including me, who get frustrated going, oh, what do we do to wake people up? You just be the highest version, living your gifts, doing your unique thing that you specifically came to do, and we've all got it. We've all got our unique, What what is the thing that makes you the happiest, that raises your vibration the most? Because the more you're doing that, in those high vibrations is how you're in the most joy, you're in the most love, and that's the power. That's what triggers it in other people. That's the number one thing I learned from hanging out with you over the last couple of years. It, it was the love. It's always been the love that shattered all the, the trauma, the fear, all the stuff I had going on. It was the unconditional love that was the greatest teacher, the greatest te uh, teacher, healer, the greatest awakener, the, the most powerful force always, and, and the love of the, the big boss, Yeshua, uh, in a couple of mystical experiences. Uh, but it's always the love that does it. It's always that. So by being that in whether you're being the best mother or the best entrepreneur or the best uh, musician, it doesn't matter. It's the love that comes through in those higher levels of consciousness. That's the transmission. That's what makes the, the, the shift. 
and it's so powerful. It doesn't matter what you're doing. If the love is there, you could be washing dishes in a restaurant. If you're in the love, it's going to affect everybody. So it's about the love. It's about the heart opening, the healing, and the level of consciousness, and that's all that matters. But while you're here, might as well do the thing you came here to do because right. that's what's going to get you into those those higher levels, your unique excitement is what Bashar ta- rants about for years and years and years and years. Follow your excitement to the best of your ability without expectation of outcome. And that's literally the teaching. And it's so simple, but it's so hard to do in the system where it's fear, fear, fear. You got to make this much money. You got to be popular. You know, you got to, you know, blah, blah, blah. You got to look like this. You got, oh my God, everybody's struggling just to survive and try to fit in and get a bit of that love, right? To, 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 even consider no i could actually just do whatever whatever i love that's going to put me in the highest vibration that's not in people's realities the reality is i better be a doctor because mom and dad want me to be a doctor and otherwise they're going to yell at me okay i guess i'll just do that though even though i hate it that's the reality out there on some level everybody trying to please everybody else and try to fit in with society and not following your truth that's that's the that's the thing you know, interest. there's a famous story of um, a French or a judge after, yeah, you know, the whole story. social re- revolution that happened in France. And at th- that time, uh, he was the most famous judge of all the judges. So that was big for their system of socialization. That was like the epitome of the hero of France, this judge. And it's on record that when he died on his deathbed, he screamed out, I wasted my life. I lived it for my parents. He didn't live it for himself. Or there's a a movie with Orson Welles in it. um, And I'm trying to remember the name of that movie. It's in one of the top 10 movies of all time. Anyway, it was a true story of a paper magnet that was, uh, you know, a billionaire uh, way back in the day. Richest man in the world, apparently, at that time. And um, the story goes that, I mean, he had warehouses of stuff, antiques and stuff from Egypt and all over the world. And when he died, he cried out, uh, Rosebud. And they went, what? he's the richest man in the world. Who's Rosebud? <laughs> they, didn't, they didn't get it. So in the story, it's so amazing. They searched through all these warehouses of all the stuff that he had. And then they finally found this little sleigh and it said on it, Rosebud. And when he was seven years old, a boy who hadn't inherited his parents' paper magnet uh, kingdom, they died, something happened to them and he inherited it really young. He was a boy enjoying himself in the winter, going down on his sled, just really enjoying life. And when he got to the house, they it all ended because he inherited all this money. And then he became corrupted in it, driven by it. And in the end, on his deathbed, he cries out, Rosebud. In other words, he was wanting to go back to being seven, to his youth, when he was here connected to life and who he was and nature and he was happy so all that shit did not make him happy and those are for me those are just two really cool stories of you know uh being famous or being rich is great you know like tony robbins says nice to arrive to your problems in style great but if you're externally making that your search for happiness never going to happen the laws be another another carrot another carrot another carrot you know and then you realize oh my god it's an inner journey it's an inner journey of happiness it's a here now i don't just be here now like you said be who you are be you and experience you and the fullness of that wow there's no better thing right and then you can share that with the love of your life or your friends or your community and that's that's the best gift you can give life is you that's it and what a beautiful place to end this extra juicy part of the woke (laughs) as fuck podcast (laughs) love you guys we'll see you on the flip side Mm. thanks sasha thanks guys hope to see you all soon bye-bye